Hi there, and welcome to Scorekeeping. Today I wanted to look at something which is very well traveled by lots of kinds of people. Whether you've played tons of video games or just play socially, maybe you have memories from being a kid, you probably know this music. This time we're going to do the music of Super Mario and Koji Kondo. Koji Kondo was never classically trained in music or particularly dedicated to music before Nintendo. He gained some experience in composing and arranging pieces by using both a piano and a computer. An arcade gamer, Kondo successfully applied for his future job at Nintendo in 1984 without requiring any demo tapes. What? I can't even get in the door without like four or five of those. Ah! The first game he worked on was the arcade game Punch-Out, but he's best known for Super Mario and Legends of Zelda, of course. Kondo cites pop, jazz, and Latin genres, as well as bands like Deep Purple, Emerson, and Lake and Palmer, as major musical influences. He's also cited the work of Russian composer Sergei Rachmaninoff as an influence, particularly his four piano concertos. His melodies were created with the intention that short segments of music could be endlessly repeated during the same gameplay, without causing boredom. He says a beautiful melody leaves a deeper impression and that it inspires more. Though he also says that it should be catchy. That's the first thing he tries to focus on when writing a melody, making it catchy. It's tempting to hear phrases like endlessly repeating and knee-jerk to minimalism. Minimalism is a style of musical composition which uses looping music, repeating musical ideas over and over again for an aesthetic. Sometimes it's meant to be hypnotic, sometimes it's just meant to stretch a short amount of material into a longer form. But the effect of this music is a lot different from Kondo's. Here, listen to this. They're all repeating the same bar or two over and over, and over and over and over and over and over and over, and they're fairly simple melodies. So what makes Kondo sound so different from the others? Music is often used as an effect called Mickey Mousing, a term borrowed from animation film. When the composer syncs the accompanying music with the actions on screen, matching the movement to the music, that's Mickey Mousing. It's like the coin sound. It's a little perfect fourth, or the power-up sound. Besides the musical tunes, Kondo also did all of the sound effects for the original Mario game, which might explain why they're generally so musical. He found that aspect of the work tough, though, so he would experiment. In the case of the one-up mushroom, he says he did a series of notes and had them play quickly, so that it would seem more like an effect. In interviews, Koji Kondo suggests repeatedly that Mario music should match the visual representation of the game, so as to, quote, enhance the gameplay and make it more enjoyable, and make each level identifiable within seconds. Each level has its own music, above ground, underground, Bowser's Lair, etc. at all, and is associated with that place, or even the character related to it. Mahito Yokota, one of Kondo's junior associates in music composition at Nintendo, whose own credits include compositions for Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2, draws the following comparison. Quote, Mario music is like music in a silent film. Just by listening to the music, you can tell what kind of story is unfolding. That's the characteristic of Mario games. It tells players as soon as they hear it whether they're in danger or safe or in need to hurry or can take time. Kondo says the underground theme is meant to sound uneasy, not too boisterous. It's a quiet, single-note melody with long rests. While the castle is meant to be more ostentatious, with lots of shorter notes one after another, which is sort of the established sound for the magisterial or ostentatious. I talk about this a little bit in my video on musical tropes, if you want to check it out. Now these themes, basically little theme songs for a character or place, are called a motive or motif. These are used really commonly, but there's something that really got going under an opera composer named Richard Wagner. 
He wrote his operas almost totally around themes for each person and place in the story. The river the operas start in, the magic ring, Valhalla, the warrior goddesses, and literally anything else in the show. He called these themes leitmotifs, which is where we get the German-ish spelling of motif from instead of motive, like with an F because it's German. Wagner insisted that the music, language, sets, lights, and absolutely everything should work together to serve the story. There was no dominant element to him. This idea of everything working together in balance, he named Gesamtkunstwerk. In English, that's like all-encompassing artwork-ish. And I can't help but think of this word while I research the Mario music. I can listen to Kondo and Yokoda talk about the music. The Mickey Mousing, the themes that are specific to people and places, they kind of match what's going on on screen and create a whole world. The music is serving as part of that universe. So how does the music work? Usually in Mario games, you get a two-bar phrase, then a repetition, then the next musical idea, and its own repeat, etc. The theme above ground, basically the main Mario theme that everybody knows, looks like this formally. A, A, B, B, C, A, D, D, C, D, repeat. This really breaks up the form of the piece so that we hear music repeat often, but not in a pattern we may readily be able to recognize or predict, and not always repeated right next to itself. Lassi dosi, lassi dosi, lassi dosi, lassi dosi, lassi dosi, lassi. This also makes it easier to switch into a whole other section of music on a dime when you enter or exit an area, say, and the motif needs to change. So, the main theme, above ground. It starts with this little mini fanfare, and it's all in the harmony of five, the five chord. I've talked in other videos about the notes of the five chord always wanting to sort of lead back to one. They resolve to one. The theme also has a bunch of quick repeating notes, like a little trumpet herald. By starting this way, Kondo is setting up an expectation, telling us orally that we're about to start the game. Actually, he does this a lot. A number of tunes in the theme end in what's called a half cadence. So you remember how I said the chord built on five always wants to resolve to one? Well, when it does, that's called a cadence. But when you set up that five chord and the expectations that go with it, but you don't go back to one, that's called a half cadence for obvious reasons, I think. And Kondo utilizes that to keep his music flowing, like this. A little more than half of the tunes in Above Ground end on five, or live totally in five, in the case of the brief intro, so that when the next tune starts up on the one chord, it resolves the five chord from the previous section. There are lots of cool harmony things he does that I'm not going to talk about right now, but it's actually fairly sophisticated music harmonically. Point is, he always gets back to five. In this way, he's sort of making the tunes reliant on each other, so that they never finish on their own. They need the next tune to keep it alive. This keeps the music rolling without a problem or a need to end for as long as you decide you're going to play the game. Forever. So we can see that unlike minimalism in the concert hall, Kondo is using these techniques because of the kind of medium he's working with. He needs the music to go on and on because there's no discrete ending to the session when it's being played. He also didn't have free reign to just use as many sounds or instruments as he wanted. Old school games had a max of three voices, in the SNES for instance. So he was doing as much as he could to make that interesting and compelling without all the colors and timbres of a larger ensemble. Another awesome thing Kondo used was the half a clave pattern. Three plus three plus two. Sometimes called a trezillo, it's a staple of some Caribbean music. It's pretty common in a lot of Kondo's tunes. What's interesting is that this is an asymmetrical rhythm. This means that the beat isn't being divided evenly. Usually, music is in some kind of four or some kind of three. We might have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, one, two, three, or maybe one and a two and a one and a two and etc. But here we have one and a two and a three and, but the last beat is gone. 
The main theme above ground is actually a version of this. So you have one and a two and a one and one and a two and a one and one and a two and a one and one and a two, etc. Right? Ba 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 ba. So it's all a half a clave pattern. It's a very dancey sort of sound, and his melody is in major mode, which most folks associate with a light, pleasant sound. Combining those, we have a sunny, fun, and most importantly, asymmetrical rhythm going on, and keeping us interested while we play, and matching the sunny, primary color, above-ground world of the Mario games. I would never have put Mario and Wagner or minimalism in the same mental box. Like, never. But they're definitely doing some of the same things. Do you notice anything else that's cool about this music? I barely even got started on the harmony. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for hanging out and watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and share the video and click the button with the bell on it to subscribe so you can see new things whenever I post. Thanks again for watching and have an awesome day.